Hello and welcome to this edition of Code Authority's virtual lunch and learn series. In today's session, I'm going to tell you all about Code Launch, a little bit about the history and the present event coming up, as well as the future. My name is Jason W. Taylor. I am the president and founder of Code Authority, which is now an improving company. Uh, Code Launch, Seed Accelerator, and Startup Expo, which is something we started about eight years ago. And um, I have about 25 years of entrepreneurial experience and uh, quite a bit of experience working with startups the last eight years at Code Launch. Well, I just alluded to it, so I'm going to take a second to tell you who Improving is. These wonderful people right behind me, including me right there on the front row in the white shirt. That was me and my new business partners at Improving, all 500 of us at our annual retreat in Las Vegas last October, right after Code Authority and Code Launch were acquired by Improving, uh, a moment that I worked for for a long time and I'm very proud of as well as everybody at Code Authority and Code Launch is excited to be uh, involved with and looking forward to our futures together. Well, let's start with what is Code Launch? Um, well, it's an annual tech startup expo where angels, developers, and startup founders collide in a space where companies are launched. So it is a tech startup expo uh, one day. It is networking. It is a seed acceler accelerator competition for early stage tech startups that are pre MVP. That's key. We're going to come back to that. This will be the eighth annual event on September 10th this year here in Frisco, Texas. We right at the present moment are not planning to do any kind of virtual anything. We're planning on not canceling our event and we're planning on producing a normal face to face big fun ener energetic event for our startups and our startup community here in north texas and uh, we may or may not tweak a few things we're definitely going to have some public safety measures in place to make everybody feel uh, confident and safe and um, but uh, if we make any changes to the flow and format we will announce those by june 30th um, the finalists are curated by our Code Launch team here, and they will receive seed services from our sponsors. In 2019, last year, those services all added together were worth more than $120,000 in lots of types of professional services. Why did we create Code Launch? Well, um, because in the first seven or eight, 10 years of Code Authority software development, consulting services, I encountered lots of startups that were completely screwed up. They had made terrible decisions trying to get their tech built. Um, a lot of times they were really sophisticated business people that had great opportunities they had identified. They had uh, all the reason in the world to believe they could execute at a high level, but they didn't understand the tech part and they fell victim to cheap offshore gimmicks, um, moonlighters that didn't have experience bidding software projects, uh, underbid the job and then walked away. Those were two common problems I saw a lot. And I always wish each time I met one of those that I had met them the first day when they were uh, hitting the ground trying to find um, someone to build their tech. So, at first, I created Code Launch so that I would have access to these startups uh, at the very early stage before they made mistakes. And then later, I realized that it was a great engagement with the public and a great way to serve the community and not just try to find deals I wanted to be a part of. So it grew and grew and grew and it morphed each year a little bit. And it became something that um, now closely aligns with um, improving and before that code authorities core values which include uh, conscious capitalism 
and we're going to talk to that uh, here in a minute. Where is Code Launch? Well, Code Launch this year, as uh, for the fifth consecutive year, will be at the Comerica Center Arena here in Frisco, Texas. That is a rather large uh, sport arena, and we just take over the floor. We put up a stage. Uh, the crowd watches from the from the stands. The, the, the finalist event, and then we all go to the uh, Startup Expo, and there's music, there's food, drinks, uh, fun, high energy, um, lots of great stuff at Code Launch. It usually starts around 3 in the afternoon and is over by 8 or 9 p.m. Who is Code Launch for? Well, if you're talking about the startups, it's for pre-MVP tech startups who need product development, funding, and are seeking a seed round. Um, so with regard to the startups, what is required to apply? Well, the first thing you got to have is polished mockups or wireframes. Um, that means not wireframes that are created in Excel. It means not wireframes that are drawn on a napkin. Um, and mockups are obviously something that looks just like a user interface. And those give us a visual idea of what you're talking about. And they're absolutely necessary for anybody that ever wants to get funded to build a tech startup. Um, what does it cost? This is the good news. It costs nothing but your time. Now, it may cost uh, some money for you to get the mockups or wireframes done. But that is going to be necessary for anybody that's trying to create a tech startup. There is going to be some bootstrapping and some funds you're going to have to put in yourself. Um, I would tell you that if you absolutely have zero funds to get your tech startup off the ground, there's a very good chance you have zero chance of ever going anywhere. Um, most accelerators, angel investors, uh, VCs and the like, unless you have a big exit, on your wall previously, they are going to want to see that you have bootstrapped the startup to some degree and have invested your own dollars. So um, other than uh, there is, there's no cost to apply, but if you make the finals, we will require you to travel here. Uh, right now, unless something changes, uh, we will require you to travel here even this year. And even if you're an international finalist, because uh, the face-to-face -face interaction on the hackathon part is critical, and as well as the face-to-face -face interaction at our finalist pitch event. Um, last year, we were very uh, honored to have our international finalists from Portugal travel here without any coercion or hand-wringing at all. And uh, Ricardo from uh, Materio had a great, great event, made some great connections, and elevated his startup progress in Europe by being part of Code Launch. Now let's go back to what I mentioned a minute ago, conscious capitalism. So uh, Code Launch is a reflection of improving core values and tight affiliation with the conscious capitalism movement. The pillars of this are shown here. We want to rise above the rest of the IT consulting profession by living into our core values and principles. That's why we put so much effort into Code Launch, giving freely to the tech startup community because we can make a difference. And so uh, our whole organization believes in these principles and these pillars. And you'll see that reflected in the way we execute Code Launch and what it's all about. So let's talk a little bit about some of the metrics in our history. Um, we touched this up at the beginning of the year in January. Some of the groups that have come out of it are uh, going ever higher, and I talk to them every quarter, every half a year. So this will change throughout this year, but um, it was true at the very beginning of 2020. This will be our eighth annual event. Um, all of the startups that have come through Code Launch, um, if you add up all the money they've raised after Code Launch, it's four and a half million. Um, you add all the services that the startups have won uh, and been a benefit of at the previous seven Code Launch events, it's over $750,000 worth of services. 
we have actually accelerated 26 different startups. Um, the total, that's not everyone that was in the finals. That's just the ones that got something more out of the finals, like they won, uh, they received services. Every year has been different. When we first started, only one winner got anything out of Code Lunch. So uh, the number has grown each year. And uh, we've got five and a half million in revenue from various different startups that happened after Code Lunch. And uh, this year we are shooting for a target once again of over $120,000 in seed services for our finalists. This is a slide that alludes to some of the sponsors that have been involved in the previous years and in and last year particularly. I've highlighted uh, UNT, uh, local North Texas University, who is uh, once again, uh, hopefully going to be our presenting sponsor for the third year in a row at Code Launch. Um, a lot of these other brands on here are brands that provided seed services to our finalists or uh, helped us cover the cost of producing the event or both. And many of the other ones um, just believe in it and like to be at it because it's such a fun uh, one day expo to develop their brand, connect with the people and have a lot of fun. Two thousand nineteen finalist benefits. So this is a breakdown of the one hundred twenty thousand uh, dollars services that we were able to give the finals last year. So we had two hackathon teams from both Code Authority and Improving. Now I'll point out that last year and the year before, Improving was involved in Code Launch, and there was no merger acquisition. There, there wasn't even any talk of it until right after the event last year. So they were involved because they believed in the mission and the cause and the values and principles of Code Launch, just like I did. And that's what got us together. Um, some of these other groups like Social Media Torch, uh, obviously I mentioned UNT, Optimus Business Plans, Try Digital, uh, Digital Marketing Agency, Drive Influence, Pitch Coaching, and Christian Law Group. Those groups put together a pile of services and we designated those for different startups that were in the finals. The future of Code Launch. Well, this is where it gets really exciting. Obviously, this year is in the future, but I'm talking about 2021 and beyond. So, uh, thanks to our great family at Improving, we are planning on taking Code Launch on the road, and we're going to produce a, a similar event. Um, hopefully in at least four cities in 2021. And Dallas-Fort Worth will always be one of those. So we'll cover three new cities next year. And then I think in 2022, we'll rotate even in some, some more new cities. And by 2022, 2023, this thing could be going all over the place. So um, we're really excited about um, the support and the backing that we have and the vision, future of Code Launch, thanks to our uh, leadership partners with uh, improving. Who are the hackathon sponsors? Well, I have uh, good news. We have Code Authority and Improving back, obviously, and that means the Dallas Office of Improving is going to provide a hackathon team. Code Authority is going to provide a hackathon team, but uh, we're going to switch things up a little bit this year, and I believe and my goal is to have a hackathon team for all four uh, finalists that are asked to come here. And that includes the international finalist and the youth finalist. And so uh, I'm also going to announce something right here. I haven't told anybody in the public. We are going to open this up to something I'm calling feral teams. So if you are a startup minded, uh, whiz bang, new stuff, uh, enthusiastic developer, um, and you've got a broad base of experience, both cloud, database, uh, JavaScript and mobile. And if you know some other mates and colleagues who are like you, we are going to open it up for individual groups to come in and pair with our uh, finalists. That is if we can't uh, get professional software development groups, um, brands that are software development consulting agencies to get on board. It's going to be really difficult this year because of the pandemic, but we're going to figure out a way to make all four finalists get a team no matter what. 
So uh, in case you are affiliated with a consulting group in some form or fashion, um, maybe it's a small dev shop, maybe a vast, large, big six consulting. Uh, I've decided to put a slide in here for you. If you would like to be uh, your brand to be affiliated as a hackathon sponsor, um, all I need is three to five of your teammates for three days. Uh, I need your team to code their hearts out as hard as they can for those three days. And then on the fourth day, one of the teammates will go on uh, with their startup on stage to demo what they got done. And um, this will promote what your team and your brain is capable of and help us elevate the entire uh, startup ecosystem here in North Texas and the startups themselves from wherever they're from. And we're going to cover that in a minute too. John, how am I doing on time? Uh, 16 awesome. minutes. Okay, great. So finalists, uh, what, where, and when? Well, uh, the hackathon team uh, that is going to be paired with you is usually one uh, very strong leader architect type with two ambitious coders and uh, maybe some cross-platform capabilities. Sometimes you can have a, a UI UX person in there for a few hours at the beginning and then swap that out with the developer when the UI UX is done. And then you can swap in a QA person at the very end. Um, but all finalists and all hackathon team members must travel to Frisco from uh, September 7th, which is uh, Labor Day. So you'll need to uh, be getting started at 3 p.m. on Labor Day, going uh, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday. We cut off at 5 p.m. No, uh, no exceptions. So um, last year, like I mentioned, um, Materio founder Ricardo came all the way from Portugal and he didn't even have a hackathon team because we weren't able to commit a hackathon team to the international finals last year. Um, unfortunately, Code Launch uh, has gotten bigger and better each year. And so sometimes uh, last year's group, it's a little less than this year's group. And that's no different this year. Um, so that's unfortunately for the past, but fortunate for this year's applicants and then um thursday is our big event day and then on uh, friday uh yeah sleep in you're going to be tired on friday everybody's tired on friday if they were part of the hackathon team or a finalist or our whole entire production staff and so uh, most of us will take that day off you can become a community partner to support code launch and that is very easy and doesn't require any money so if you are another brand in the startup community or um, in any way interested in getting in this space and you have some social media reach and you're willing to promote code launch talk about what's going on and try to attract applicants or just attract people to attend on event day you can be a community partner with code launch and in exchange we will also promote your brand on our social media which is uh uh, got thousands of followers and tens of thousands in our email database. And we will also um, put your brand and a valuable backlink to you and your site to help elevate your SEO. So uh, we love community partners. If you would like to be a community partner, please reach out. It's easy to find us. Um, you can contact us through the Code Authority site or the codelaunch.com website. All right, let's cover the categories that I've mentioned. So there are four categories to apply uh, with in Code Launch. It starts with international. So if you are a uh, international citizen, if you're based not in the United States, then uh, you, it will ask you that question and it will automatically slot you in international. Um, right now we have about I think 50% of our applications from international countries. And I think there's a slide coming up on that. Um, and we have 50% domestic um, US states applicants. So if you say no, uh, not from international, then it's going to say, are you a full time student? And that could be uh, elementary school, middle school, high school, college, doctorate, master's degree, whatever. But if you're a full time student, we're going to consider you youth. Maybe we should call that student since adults can be student. Anyway, it's the youth category. 
And, um, and then if you, you say, I'm not a student, then it's going to say, is your concept more about social impact and social change than it is profiteering? And we respect there's a lot of people and a lot of ideas like that that can make that impact that should be just as valuable to our event and to the community. So if you say yes to that question, you'll be slotted in the social change category. And then if you answer, uh, answer no to those three questions, then it's going to assume that you're a US citizen, you're not a student, uh, and your idea and your purpose is to create something great that makes a lot of money. And uh, obviously we love those ideas too. And so you'll land in US commercial. There'll be one finalist from each of these groups this year. And that means uh, there'll be four pitches at pitch day. So uh, what are the curation stages? Um, what happens behind the scenes once the application deadline passes? Um, here's another tidbit of news. The deadline is currently June 30th. Uh, I pretty much decided in the last three days to move that back a few days to July 3rd, just because it was awkward to finish the deadline on a Tuesday um, in our office. And it's going to be better for us if we can promote it that whole week and then finish our applications at midnight Friday, July 3rd. So that's not announced yet, but that's coming in the next few days. Um, but then what happens after that? Well, in the, in the quarterfinals, that's the first cut. So we look at every application and we look at the attachments, specifically uh, the ones I mentioned, either wireframes or mockups, and um, the application itself, the concept, the team, all the details that are in there, where the person is. And we try to pick the ones that we think are just well crafted, well thought out applications. Uh, we're not really criticizing the idea at that stage. We're just trying to make about a halfway cut. These are the best half and these other ones need to work on it a little bit more. Um, so we'll announce that uh, about a week after the deadline and then we'll immediately start getting really our hands dirty on, on the next group. And the next group, we're trying to identify the semifinals. So um, on that group, for the first time ever, uh, we're going to give each one of those uh, some homework. And um, what that means is you're going to have a small milestone to achieve and a short time to achieve it. And what we're trying to do is figure out who can hustle and who can execute because execution is the key to any startup. And uh, we've learned that uh, lesson over the years with the many um, uh, groups that have been through the, the event. So it's not going to be too intimidating. It's not going to cost you a lot of money, but it may cost you a little money and some time, some creativity and some effort between you and your founding teammates. Uh, that could be create a placeholder uh, web page with a domain, uh, something like that. It could be uh, go, find, go get a letter from a company in your space saying that they would commit to use your uh, using your your beta product in a business setting something simple that is meaningful and so we're going to look at the groups that achieve the milestones and then we're going to uh, score those internally and then we're going to announce our semi-finalists now the semi-finalists uh, are going to get a one hour pitch meeting so that is a uh, where we really start to evaluate the people, um, their ability to deliver an enticing, intriguing, energetic, and um, exciting message during their very tight pitch window of five minutes. So that can be via Skype or it can be in person. Sometimes people will travel here, even though they're from faraway places, to do their in person pitch. Uh, many, many times groups will pitch over uh, Teams or Skype or Zoom or whatever you want to use. Uh, we're happy to do that. And we've had plenty of finalists make it from both categories. So don't feel like you have to be here uh, because you don't. But uh, it's great if you are because it helps us get to know you better and it helps you get to know us better. And then from that group, we are going to pick our finalists. And really, honestly, the, the finalists are going to be picked from uh, those who met every 
milestone that we put in front of them. Um, had a great pitch, have a great pitch deck, have a uh, clear, committed intent to attend the event and the hackathon. And then most of all, whose technology matches up with the skills of a team that we have. So we're going to have four teams and, you know, maybe not all those teams are going to be super strong in mobile development. Um, last year we had a new piece of hardware. Uh, maybe you, you know about last year's finalist Caracorder. Uh, the founder, Riley Keene, had invented a completely brand new keyboard and he needed a device driver built, okay? Device drivers are not easy and has a very specific technology. And so we couldn't just hand that over to three or four guys or gals that are super good at mobile development. That wouldn't make any sense. So we got our best low level programmers and we built a Caracorder device driver in their hackathon. And so um, that's how we're going to pair up. So we could have six or seven finalists to consider and then we're going to get with our finalist hackathon groups and we're going to pick our four. There's going to be a couple there that are going to be uh, miss the cut just because we don't have enough skill set that matches their need. And, um, you know, I hope to get Code Launch to the point where we have so many hackathon teams that there is never anybody left out of that finals group. Uh, but that's where we're at right now. And then the pitch day event, uh, those groups will have just finished their hackathons the night before. They're going to be practicing at noon that day. Doors are going to open around three. Then there's an expo and then there's music. And then here comes the big pitch event around 5, 530. And hopefully um, they'll go on stage, demonstrate their technology and have a great event. The crowd will choose the winner. So um, but that brings us to something else that's new this year, and that is the 2020 Code Launch Afterburner. So we have um, a support volunteer this year named Josh Strambiello. You might have seen him on a previous Code Launch uh, Lunch and Learn, and he's in charge of the Afterburner. Um, the Afterburner is a 90-day competition that happens after Code Launch. So it's not going to end at Code Launch this year. And what that means is we're going to give um, each group what we think is a fair but maybe differing next 90 day milestone. Uh, maybe the same, maybe differing, whatever's appropriate for their content and their execution path. And um, we're going to weigh those independently. And after 90 days, there's going to be a code launch afterburner win uh, winner. That winner um, is going to get special recognition. recognition uh, probably more services, additional PR, and it might not even be the same group that won Code Launch uh, that was selected by the attendees. So that one will be selected by us. Could be the same group, maybe a different one. Um, so that's new this year, and we're hoping to make that part of a, a pillar of Code Launch going forward. So um, this is a topic I covered in the last Lunch and Learn, but I think it's appropriate here too. Um, how does code launch differ from a typical seed accelerator? Well, um, I'm going to go straight down to the bottom bullet point there, which is code launch does not take equity like most all accelerators do. And I say all there because I don't know of any other accelerators that put serious effort, money, time, and, and, and sweat into accelerating pre seed uh, startups that don't take a piece of equity to get involved up front. Uh, we don't do that at Code Launch. I'm not saying that they're wrong. I'm just saying that what I want to do is help startups get to that level, and then we can have that conversation later. Um, I don't want to mess up your cap table before it's, uh, before it's due. And so um, what we do give our, our finalists is a, a whole bunch of services, a whole bunch of PR, um, a chance to compete in a public setting with a crowd, pitching, um, having to get challenged by the panel with QA, Q and A, um, networking, and um, that's what we try to do with Code Launch, and that includes legal services, creative services, mentoring services, uh, pitch coaching, digital marketing, uh, professional software development, obviously the hackathon. That's the key, right? 
And um, so code launch is a seed accelerator that doesn't take equity up front and costs nothing to apply. I don't think there's anyone in America like that. If there is, let me know. So now I'm gonna cover quickly, we're at 12.30, I got 15 more minutes. Quickly cover a code launch success story. Um, I covered this one in the last launch and learned too, because these guys have the most uh, upward momentum of anyone that's ever come out of code launch, except for the one that we we sold. So we did we did create one and sell one in the very first group, which was amazing. Uh, but since then, this group is has topped them all, and um, they started by by not winning code launch. So they were a finalist in 2016. They did not get a professional hackathon. They did get chosen by the judges uh, for a couple of awards. I think most financial potential, and I also think best pitch. But the uh, overall winner went to Park Up Front, who were also doing very well from that year. But these guys have raised a lot of money. They have. Uh, they started with a very very uh, simple MVP. They got a whole bunch of pilot customers in their space to sign up and use their software. While they did that, they bootstrapped their own money. They raised some money and got it to the point now where they raised several times and they've closed their seed uh, round and are planning a series A later this year. They have revenue, they have employees, they have an office, they have a product, they have customers, they have everything. Uh, they have a great leadership team. Uh, one of their guys has uh, a lot of entrepreneurial experience. Another one has a lot of tech experience in startups. So keep your eye out for prosrent.com. Who started at, at Code Launch 4 by not winning? Um, and then last year's finalist, I mentioned Carrot Quarter a minute ago. Um, they were invited uh, later in the fall to have an exhibit at CES in January. How about that? They're the first code launch finalists to ever go from code launch to CES. Um, uh, I believe as part of being at CES, they got a lot of investor interest. They were featured in the CES guide as like, go check out this like these exhibits that have hot new tech. Uh, their their keyboard and user interface device is truly groundbreaking, and they closed a seed round of funding and um, are about to build the commercially viable MVP. So congrats to Kara Corder and Riley Keene from Atlanta, Georgia. And then also 3G Strong, uh, a couple of local uh, startup founders that um, at the time were part of the Frisco ISD school system in administration and teaching. They had vetted their concept with actual students um, over and over and developed really good content and all the curriculum for their product. And uh, I think in the fall they raised funding and their product is being built and it may already have been launched at this point. So um, 3G Strong was last year's winner as chosen by the crowd. Care Quarter, like Pro's Rent, didn't win and went on to make it to CES and get funding anyway. And here, I just thought I would throw in a picture from Code Launch 4. You can see how crappy our, um, our screen was back then. It was a floppy like 12 by 12 projector screen on a rickety piece of metal. Um, although we had a great MC that year with Susie Solis, who uh, is been in Dallas Fort Worth News and radio for a long time. So uh, there's John Clark winning, what's it say? Best pitch at Code Launch 4. Um, congratulations, John, for not giving up. So, this year, let's talk about code launch. When is it? It is September 7th through 10th. Now, 7th through 10th, that's the hackathons. The actual event that you will be interested in if you are not a finalist or if you want to attend is Thursday, September 10th at the Comerica Center Arena here in Frisco. It's right outside that window across the street from me. Um, applications are due. Oh, I already put it in here, July 3rd. So there's my public announcement. Um, we haven't changed the website yet. We haven't tweeted about it or anything like that, but we're moving the deadline back three days. So you'll have three extra days to get your code launch applications in. Um, 
one fun fact is that it seems that almost everybody waits to the very last day because they're afraid that you may, if they submit it today on May 10th, uh, June 10th, that they will come up with some slide or a new twist on June 12th and then have to change it. So we get bombarded with the last 100 or 200 on the last day. Um, so I guess that's just the way it is. Um, right now we sit, uh, as of last night at 9 p.m. when I finished this deck, we sit at 51 applications. Um, but you'll, that may seem low, but they're all pretty good this year so far. Um, we have a much more sophisticated applicant pool in the last two, three years than we did the first four or five. And um, one thing you might find very interesting is that uh, 14 countries represent those 51 applications across four continents. So the only continent that has not applied is South America, um, Antarctica, and what's the one I'm forgetting? <laughs> South America, uh, Antarctica, obviously nobody lives there. Australia, no one's applied from Australia this year so far. So tell your friends in Australia, um, you know, I had to go look. We have one from Honduras and I had to go look up. It's Honduras, South America. I know it's Central America, right? But that's not a full continent. So it turns out Honduras is actually on the very southern edge of North America. So we still need you guys in Brazil and um, other places in South America to apply. And then uh, 13 of the 50 U.S. states. Um, a lot of good ones. And I think there's only about eight from Texas right now. So lots of room for you Texas guys to get your applications in. So we have arrived at the point where I am supposed to ask for questions. Um, if anybody has any questions, John, could you read me one of those questions? Uh, question is, how are the entries looking so far this year compared to previous years? So I, I just alluded to that um, on this slide, so I switch back to it. Um, I would say that the this year, the applicants are taking the ask of have a polished deck and have polished mockups or wireframes very seriously. And that is what I have noticed the most about the ideas. Um, I also have noticed that we have a lot more interest from places far away uh, the weight, the ratio of Texas and local to faraway states and countries is much higher. And that is because uh, we've had blogs and different uh, people write articles about code launch and talk about the uniqueness of it and the, the special amenity that it has become to the tech startup community and how um, just making it to the semifinalist list can be an achievement that helps you uh, open doors. So um, they're looking good and I'm really excited about this year's event. I, I think that we could have a good event with our 51 right now. Is there any more questions? So next question, uh, has Code Launch ever thought about going all over the US and not just here in Dallas? Yeah, so I, I mentioned that about halfway through. Um, my business partners um, with Improving definitely uh, said when we first got together, we love Code Launch. What if we got together and we took Code Launch on the road? What if we uh, produced the event in, let's say, Atlanta, Houston, uh, Minneapolis?